Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. One tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing good today. And I hope everybody had a happy Easter weekend. So there's a lot of things going on right now globally that I want to go ahead and hit on. And I have Lady J in the house with me today. Lady J, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? Hope all is well. Yes, it is a lot going on. So what I want to do first is start with these video clips that we were watching concerning the lockdown. If you guys do not know, um, in Shanghai, China, they have been locked down now going on three weeks. And when I say lockdown, I mean completely locked down. They're being told they can't open their windows. They're not allowed to sing. Child, it is a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys these video clips, and I want you guys to check this out. And then me and Lady J will come and talk and, you know, give our commentary on the situation. The COVID crisis and that mass lockdown in Shanghai, confining more than 25 million people to their homes and separating children who test positive for COVID from their parents. Will Reeve has the latest. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Michael. It has long been part of China's stringent COVID policy to separate children who test positive from their parents who test negative. And now unverified video out of Shanghai purports to show that separation in action, sparking anger among residents of China's largest city, which is now under lockdown. This morning, more than 25 million people are in lockdown in Shanghai. China's largest city, with over 94,000 cases recorded since the beginning of March. Officials calling the outbreak extremely grim, blaming it on the highly transmissible Omicron variant. China defending its hardline zero COVID strategy, which includes separating children who test positive from their parents if their parents test negative. Authorities claiming the policy is vital to prevention and control work. These images, which ABC News was unable to verify, purportedly showing toddlers with COVID away from their parents in cribs at Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center. Outrage erupting as they circulated on social media. But the center addressing the images, saying in a statement that the children are well cared for and had been in the process of being moved to a new building when the footage was taken. Meanwhile, the Chinese government sending more than 38,000 health care workers to Shanghai to fight the outbreak. Tens of thousands of people reportedly under observation citywide. Chinese officials this week have extended that lockdown in Shanghai, the third largest city in the world, indefinitely. And reports out of China today say that some parents who test negative can apply to be with their children who test positive, but there are no guarantees. COVID lockdown, Shanghai style. 26 million people, by some measures the biggest city in the world, confined to their homes. But breaking through the silence, drone instructions. There have been desperate complaints of shortages of food, water and medicines. Overburdened delivery networks and growing protests. Public services are in chaos. One sick American, rather than being allowed to go home to isolate, was instructed to bed down on the ground outside a full hospital. Look, I've been sleeping on the ground. Man, our lockdowns are, are just a little different, you know? When they say that you're locked down, there's, there's no going outside, there's no opening your doors. It's, you know, you just kind of do as you're told. It's not just Shanghai. Across China, some 23 cities and 200 million people are under full or partial lockdown. And that's all having a severe impact on the massive Chinese economy. The Wuhan lockdown at the start of the pandemic in 2020 led to a historic collapse in economic activity in China. Amid the Shanghai lockdown, indicators are plunging again. But despite the draconian Shanghai lockdown, which began on the 28th of March, new COVID cases are continuing to rise, reflecting the awesome transmissibility 
of the Omicron variant. Shanghai authorities have threatened to punish people who breach the city's COVID-19 lockdown rules. Police in the financial hub have warned residents not to spread false information or to forge road passes in order to go out for their daily supplies. Now nearly 26 million people are under lockdown. Shanghai police have banned cars from the roads and only those involved in epidemic prevention work or transporting people in need of emergency medical treatment are allowed to be out and about. Residents have been battling to secure food delivery slots. Reports say many are being forced to pay exorbitant prices for necessities. Officials say that they've issued 38,000 warnings to supermarkets and shops about price gouging. Shanghai reported more than 25,000 new asymptomatic cases today and nearly 1,200 symptomatic infections. Both mark a jump from yesterday. Another round of mass testing has been ordered in high-risk lockdown zones. And at the same time, health officials have warned that the situation in Shanghai is not under control, even as some restrictions are being eased. So, Lady J, being that you lived in China before, um, what is causing this entire lockdown situation? Why does it seem like China is going backwards and they're even being more strict now than even in 2020? Because Shanghai is a major city. This is like one of the third most populous cities in the world. And for everything to be shut down is really unprecedented. I'm going to be honest. I live there. Um, and... I was there and realized early on that, man, we thought like, no, they're not going to shut completely down because it's a financial hub. And that's kind of like the mentality that a lot of us had who lived there and had worked there. Now, I'm going to say just from the jump, you know, whoever made it past 2020, I have to really say God bless them. There's a lot of people who are still there, but there are a lot of people who are leaving and there's a combination of a lot of things that are going on. Because at the time in 2020, when the lockdowns for everybody were kind of just coming into place, because we're talking spring 2020, the Chinese government had already made a decision to start kind of beginning this concept of the circular economy. And in short, what it is, is basically kind of like, okay, keep your money and let it circulate in the community a little bit longer so everybody can kind of, you know, do the thing. And because China, by definition, has always been a country that was isolationalist. Like, they just kept everybody out. That's what China does. Just look at their history. That's what they do. Um, the pandemic allowed them to be able to do what they're doing now. And zero COVID nobody really understands how that's really possible if we understand biology. So there's a lot of complex things going on here. And I know I'm kind of reaching in so many areas, but that's just how the dynamics of the situation is playing out. It's all over the place. It's like a bouncy ball. It's crazy. And I, I really feel bad for people. So what was kind of creepy in one of the videos, the drone was literally because that video went viral, I believe, on Weeb on Weibo. They yeah. took it down, and then, but it was ready on Twitter. So you see mm -hmm. all these people in these high rises, and it's late at night, and they're just screaming. And the mm -hmm. reason why a lot of people are screaming is that they've literally been locked down for two weeks. People are running out of food, and mm -hmm. they can't just go like you know. At least here in America, we could still go grocery shopping. You know, even if we had a curfew, we could still, you know, at least sit in your front yard and all that stuff. They are not to leave their apartments, their homes or anything. So all these people were up late at night screaming. And what just creeped me out was when the drone says, basically control your soul's desire for freedom. To me, that was very dystopian, very mm -hmm. creepy. And at mm -hmm. that point, I felt like this is not about this so-called Omicron virus. This is about control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, like, if you just look at the policy itself, and again, I'm using real layman's terms here to describe, in short, what the policy is. But it's this zero COVID policy where they're trying to stamp out and isolate it completely. I don't know how that's possible when it mutates. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's number one. It, it, it mutates. So how is that possible? Um, 
With that being said, I'm trying to remember when I was there and I remember the lockdown when they started. And they were soft lockdown too. The hard lockdown were in, like in Shanghai, were in Pudong. They were in the Pudong district, you know, out way past the Disneyland and the ports. You know, uh, that's the Pudong side of Huang Pu River. That's the east side of Shanghai. And on the west side of Shanghai is Puxi. And you have all these different districts like Chani and Qibao and Puto and Yang and uh, Huang Pu and Jing'an. And for those districts to be locked down, each of those districts have like 1.5 million people in these small little districts. It's crazy. And I don't understand how it's possible, but they're doing it. Um, and where are the numbers coming from? If y'all were locked down in 2020, y'all said the numbers had abated. Where are these numbers coming from if you're strictly probing people coming into the country, putting them in hotels for three weeks, testing and testing them, and they're coming out? That means that it's still circulating and mutating among the population. That means it's not going anywhere. I don't understand. I do agree. I think there's a control mechanism here. Exactly. And I think that's what it boils down to is the fact that um, people are tired. And eventually, to me, there's more people in China, right, than the government. So are these people eventually going to fight back or are they just going to you know, be stuck in their homes? Because I've seen videos where even some of the food delivery drivers if they test positive for COVID, they're automatically being sent back, even though they have food in their truck that can be unloaded to help the people. So it, this is very frightening that it's gotten to this point. And it's like, is it going to eventually trickle off to the rest of the world? Are we going to go back under lockdown again, even more severe? Because they're saying that that version of COVID mm -hmm. is a lot worse than the one in 2020. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.